The important point to keep in mind, time doesn't allow me here, is this is not the first time Israel faced this problem. It's a recurring problem for Israel. It wasn't back in the 1970s, it wasn't the problem of Islamic fundamentalism. Back in the 1970s, it was the problem of Arab nationalism. It was the PLO. In the late 1970s, the Palestine Liberation Organization, just like Hamas now, the PLO, under the leadership of Yasser Arafat, it agreed to a two-state settlement. And at that time, the PLO was headquartered in Lebanon. In July 1981, the PLO enters into a ceasefire with Israel. The problem wasn't shelling of the south, is, excuse me, rocket attacks in the south of Israel. The problem then was allegedly shelling of northern Israel, the Galilee, by the PLO. In July 1981, there's a uh, ceasefire between the PLO and Israel. The PLO says we're willing to settle on a two-state settlement. Then, in August 1981, the Arab League puts forth a peace proposal, just like the one it put forth in March 2002. In 1981, it wasn't the Crown Prince Abdullah peace plan, it was the Crown Prince Fahd peace plan. And just like Fahd eventually became king, so did Abdullah eventually became king. It was the same thing. A two-state settlement, the Arab League puts it forth, Israel is now in a panic. He can't any longer dismiss the PLO as a terrorist organization because one, it agrees to the two-state settlement, and two, it was holding fast to the ceasefire. So what does Israel do? Beginning in September 1981, it so begins pre uh, preparations to attack the PLO. Why does it do it? We have a very good study by an Israeli strategic analyst, Avner Yanid, it's called The Levels of Secure Security. He said Israel had a very big problem in 1981. The problem was that the Palestinians were agreeing to, as he called, a historic compromise with Israel, a two-state settlement, but the Israelis opposed the Palestinian state in the West Bank. So, what did they do? He says, now I'm calling Avner Yanid, a very mainstream Israeli who since passed away, political strategic analyst. He said Israel began uh, punitive military raids, quote, deliberately out of proportion against Palestinian and Lebanese civilians. Why? Why were they attacking civilians, he says? Because they wanted to weaken PLO moderates, strengthen the hand of <coughs> Arafat's radical rivals and guarantee the PLO's inflexibility. If you keep pound, pounding the civilian population, at some point pressure is going to build on the leadership. Don't negotiate with them. It'll make them inflexible. And that's exactly what Israel wanted. It didn't want a moderate Palestinian leadership. It wanted a radical, inflexible one, so then they can go around saying we have no one to negotiate with and to continue their appropriation and annexation of the West Bank. Unfortunately, this guy Arafat, who was very stubborn, no matter how much Israel pounded, he kept saying, I support a two-state settlement. So Israel only had two options at that point, says Abner Yani. Quote, a political move leading to a historic compromise with the PLO or preemptive military action against it. And he says Israel decided they had to attack the PLO. Why? I always like this phrase. I read the book many, many years ago, uh, but the phrase always stayed with me. He said the problem was, quote, Arafat's peace offensive. <laughs> that was the problem. These Arabs, these diabolical Arabs, they went even and even figure out a way to launch peace offenses. Before Israel attacked, according to, before Israel attacked, according to Abna Yanid, let me quote, the Israeli invasion, quote, had been preceded by more than a year of effective ceasefire with the PLO. Just what happened with Hamas, exactly the same. But then they kept attacking, finally they killed, Israel killed 200 civilians in one raid including 60 occupants of a Palestinian children's hospital. Finally, the Palestinians retaliated, killed a single Israeli uh, casualty. 
and now Israel had a uh, pretext to go into, um, go into Lebanon. Some of you are old enough to remember between June and September 1982, they killed between 18 and 20,000 Lebanese and Palestinians, overwhelmingly civilians. It was a very successful operation. It was called Operation Peace in the Galilee because they claimed they went in because of those shellings of the northern Galilee. But Ahmed Yamin says, that's ridiculous. The reason they went in, he says, the raison d'etre of the entire operation was destroying the PLO as a political force capable of claiming a Palestinian state on the West Bank. The pretense was the shelling of the north. The reality was those diabolical Palestinian peace offensives and the only way to, to defeat them is by knocking out the PLO. And that brings us up to the present, and I'll leave it off there. December, 9th, December 2008, Israel's foreign minister, Tzipi Libni, she says that Israel is in favor of a temporary truce with Hamas, but not an extended truce. Why? She said an extended truce harms the Israeli strategic goal, empowers Hamas, and gives the impression that Israel recognizes the movement. And that's exactly right. If you have a protracted truce with Hamas, then Hamas becomes a legitimate negotiating partner. Hamas has expressed a willingness to settle on the June 67 border. And that will, in Livni's words, harm Israel's strategic goal, which is to retain the West Bank. As far back as March 2007, According to the Israeli newspapers, Israel decided in attacking Hamas, and they only negotiated the June troops. The Israelis were very honest about this. They said Farm uh, Defense Minister Ehud Barak, he only negotiated the June troops because, quote, the Israeli army needed time to prepare an attack. Once all the pieces were in place, Israel only lacked the pretext. And then it does what it always does to provoke a pretext. This time they waited until November 4th, when the attention of all Americans was riveted on the outcome of the election. While the Americans were watching the results of the election, Israel broke the ceasefire by going into Gaza and killing six or seven Palestinian militants, and knowing full well that its operation, as it called it, would provoke Hamas into hitting back. After Hamas predictably resumed its rocket attacks, as the official Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs website acknowledges, in retaliation, that's the word they use, in retaliation for Israel's November 4th raid into Gaza, uh, Israel could embark on yet another murderous invasion in order to foil yet another one of those diabolical Palestinian peace initiatives. Okay, thank you.